My Hero Academia is really getting heated. This week we see a flashback to the anticipated Toga vs Uraraka fight. Not only that, but there is an interesting twist. As we saw last week, Kuragiri was already transporting villains across the various battlefields. It is an all out brawl. Immediately we are taken back to Okuto Island, which serves as the battlefield for Toga, Fropi, and Uraraka. Surely this will be a really exciting fight. After all, Horikoshi has kept it from us for so long. In the chaos, Toga slips behind Fropi. The rainy season hero looks a bit scraped, but none worse for wear. Honestly, it's surprising she has been able to hold her own. We haven't seen much of Fropi. Maybe she'll get a chance to shine. Either way, Uraraka called out to her friend. Fropi isn't quick enough to react, however. So Uraraka takes Toga head on. She quickly disarms the young villain. You've gotta love Uraraka's growth. Hopefully we'll see zero satellites during this bout. It's a more creative Uraraka move. Sadly, they are in an ocean setting, and so it is doubtful there will be much to grab on. That being said, this clash reminds me of their brief encounter during the war. Uraraka may have ambushed them, but now she can clearly fight. The gunhead techniques did not go to waste. Then, Uraraka figures something out. She is quickly able to deduce Toga's camouflage ability. In fact, she reckons that she must be one of the only people who can see it. The fact that she figures out Toga's sneak attack technique is rather impressive. She wasn't this observant before, so maybe Deku is rubbing off on her. Uraraka then pushes Toga away. Despite the fact that Toga was coming at Fropi with a knife, Uraraka is still playing defense. She is proving that Toga's life still matters. After all, is a question that has been on Toga's mind since the first war. After learning how Toga moves, Uraraka decides there must be four sensors to track her movement. Still hoping to reach her, Uraraka shouts for Toga to stop. Obviously, she is ignored. This island will end up Toga's last stand. Meanwhile, Gang Orca isn't looking as dapper as he normally does. He is fighting Anomu, which is probably why. However, he notices something different. This Nomu lacks any regenerative power, which is the first we've seen. Every Nomu has shared a common trait, having a regen quirk. Its lack makes me wonder if this is somehow an incomplete creature, although it is considered a near high end. So it is conflicting information. Unfortunately, I think there is a dangerous reason for it. Other heroes are also fighting the Nomu. So not only is there the target of Toga, there is also the danger of multiple Nomus, one of which is a near high end. Thankfully, the other Nomu have been captured, except for the high end. It seems that such a massive being will be formidable. Gang Orca won't give up though. He encourages his fellow heroes to continue fighting. Our job is to guarantee the island. Unfortunately, that may not happen. This is the final stand for both the heroes and the villains. Both sides are committed to winning. Failing isn't an option. In fact, it is something that Toga wrestles with. The point of view switches to her. She acknowledges the fact that it is harder to move undetected. This is because there are fewer villains around. During the war, she was capable of taking down several heroes. Though she was also filled with rage from watching Twice die. It is the driving force behind why she is there now. The event was so upsetting that she thinks of him even now. She still carries a vial of his blood. It is a small amount, but it can guarantee 30 to 40 minutes of transformation. However, the heroes have subdued all but one Nomu. If she uses twice his blood now, the clones could be stopped rather quickly. In her own words, Sadman's parade won't make it off this island. Toga not only wants revenge for twice, she also wants to carry on his legacy. However, her actions lack any real strategy. Toga acts solely on instinct. She isn't trained for combat like the heroes. Besides, Toga is still a teenage girl. Knowing that she is losing the upper hand, Toga considers her options. Even if she could overwhelm the heroes, she is still stuck. The island is far away from anything else. It's the perfect place to contain her and the sad man's parade. Toga realizes this, wondering if they knew about Twice's blood. But they didn't, at least not that specifically. Yet the heroes do know of the danger Toga presents. She's unpredictable, quick, and now can mimic quirks. In fact, her ability alone makes her dangerous. In theory, she can defeat everyone there, wait for rescue, and assume the identity of a hero. Unfortunately, Toga doesn't see any other option. She has to make her last stand. Right here, right now. And through her own feelings of hostility and defeat, Toga takes a leap into total villainy. With a certain vial, she decides to do it. She believes in Spinner and is determined to see this fight through. Immediately, Fropi notices the vial. She doesn't know if it is all for ones or Shigaraki's blood. However, both are naive guesses for the horror Toga has in store. Either way, it must be destroyed. 
Using her tongue, she breaks it. This move reminds me of Ropi's encounter with Toga during the forest training arc, and so maybe she will get a chance for a rematch. That being said, will Toga's dream die here? The answer is a simple no. Toga commends Ropi for being so calm and collected. However, those traits are why she prepared a decoy. The vial she held was not twice his blood. Instead, it was a drug. It was given to her by All for One and does one thing. The drug is meant to attract Nomu. Meaning, the gigantic near high end is now headed right towards her. Its stretchy arms attack the rainy season hero. Uraka calls out to her. The attack itself is big enough to cause debris and dust to kick up. Uraka does not see her fellow hero because of it. But when she does, there is a startling image. There are two Sus. One is clearly injured, including her face and her hair. The other looks perfectly pristine, even with goggles still on. Though it is clear that one is the imposter. After all, Toga can only replicate someone's appearance, not their injuries. Which means, Frophy has been hurt. Speaking of, there is no telling who else she has in her vials. Granted, twice is the most important. Meanwhile, Toga resolves to not hesitate. Toga's only desire is to live life the way she wants. And this is what she wants. She will make Sadman's parade live up to Twice's legacy. Although, Uraka is privy to this. She watches as Toga, disguised as Frophy, places the young hero on the ground. It's a kind gesture, which makes her attack all the more bitter. Toga is not a monster. She can still be reached. Instead of killing Frophy then and there, she rescues her. Toga was close enough to kill her easily, and yet she did not. This suggests that Uraka can still get through to her. Besides, Toga's question hinges on it. If her life, despite the fact that she is a villain, has no value, what is the point? If lives have different numerical values, why not tear down the entire system? It is the same issue we have seen before. The question of human life was seen with Spinner's Mutant Army. Considering the trend, maybe we'll see this repeated with Shigaraki and Deku. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uraka is the first to see Sadman's parade. With a small glass vial, Toga is able to transform. She changes into Twice and begins to unleash his devastating quirk. This flashback also provides context for Frophy's goggles. Last week, we saw a Twice clone with them, and many assumed the worst. In reality, the clone had the goggles due to who Toga transformed into beforehand. Just as it starts, a hole in the sky appears. It is inky black and no doubt Kurigiri's doing. The hostility in her heart led to a miracle. Now, the spark of Sadman's parade will not die on a lonely island. Instead, it will be ignited and used. Uraka is completely shocked by Kurogiri's arrival. He has been locked up for a while and his appearance can only mean one thing. They failed at the hospital. Everything that could go wrong for the heroes has. Granted, that points to an eventual win. They've got to start picking them up. Or at least I hope they do. Kurogiri says, I have to save Shigaraki and the others. He struggles to speak. Perhaps his fractured appearance implies an unstable mind. Maybe Shirakumo could still bubble up to the surface. Then, the Spectral Quirk user asks Toga what she wants most. Disguised as twice, she responds with a simple desire. Toga wants to kill all the heroes, beginning with Hawks. That aside, Toga also tells Kurigiri to spread around the clones. Various battlefields overrun by twice would be the worst case scenario. Hawks did manage to kill twice, but that does not negate how strong his quirk was. A completely free sad man could destroy a city, if not a country. Which is why Uraraka is so desperate to stop it. She deploys her cables. Unfortunately, the Twice clones snap them. Then, Uraraka calls back to their original discussion. Toga brought Deku there for an answer regarding her life. She also confessed her love to him. So Uraraka calls out, We still haven't talked about love. It's clear the young hero is still trying to appeal to Toga's emotions. If there is anything to say about Toga, it is that she is so in tune with how she feels. Sue sees it happen, but is still too dazed to help. She did just incur the wrath of Anomu. Toga sees her, silently watching as she disappears into the portal. She agrees with Uraka though. The young villain responds, how great would it be if we could? Clearly, Toga has drawn her line in the sand. She sees a stark difference in heroes and villains. To her, they cannot mesh together. Due to her actions and her quirk, she is ostracized. So if there is no room for her in this world, why not tear it down? Plus, she would also get revenge for twice, a life for a life. We then change locations to the Gunga Mountain Villa Ruins. As a reminder, this is where Hawks, All for One, Endeavor, and others are fighting. 
Rain falls from the sky as Hawk sees the unbelievable Twice clones. He wonders if this is on account of the villain's blood. The winged hero does not see it as possible, however, considering he took measures to avoid it. Unfortunately, he did not account for Dobby getting a hold of Twice's blood. Once again, this unpredictable flame villain is throwing a monkey wrench into the hero's plans. And Hawks is able to deduce that it was Dobby. Toga tells him that it is too late. The battlefield is taken over by clones. Infinite doubles, sad man's parade. Hawks knows all too well how grim the situation is. It is written all over his face. Meanwhile, the mushroom girl from class 2A, Kanoko Komori, sees the carnage and says, how can things keep getting worse? The heroes have been taking L's after L's, this chapter especially. They have seemingly lost several battlefields, or at least, they have lost the edge. Not to mention, Bakugo is still dead. The heroes are still in the thick of it. However, they can't give up just yet. As all seems lost, both Uraraka and Frophy come flying through the portal. Uraraka shouts, I'm not letting you go that easily, which I suppose is a pretty strong moment for the character. While it is clear that she became a hero to make money, she still has a heart of gold. At her core, Uraraka just wants to save people. That being said, her entrance is pretty neat. She appears to be using Frophy's tongue as a lasso. Finally, some use for her super long tongue. If anyone can stop Toga, maybe even get through to her, it is Uraraka. They are both teenage girls, but more importantly, they have had similar experiences. On some level, Uraraka can make Toga realize she isn't alone. If she can do that, she might be able to stop this carnage. Otherwise, every hero there may die by Toga's hands. That being said, it is a really tricky situation. Dobby is there, as are Endeavor, Hawks, and most importantly, All For One. It seems like there will be multiple fights. All For One and Toga versus Hawks and Uraraka, which is a team up I did not know I wanted. Meanwhile, Dobby and Endeavor will battle it out. Genuinely, this is a pretty awful situation. The heroes have been backed into a corner, and they are exhausted. The flavor text recognizes this too. The worst case scenario just won't stop. However, we also see the weather reporter from before. While she stood up to all for one, she also wondered if there was a domino effect. Seeing her and the reference she made, I wonder if we will have a certain moment. During an interview, Horikoshi once said that Hawks and Uraraka would be beacons of light. I think that the time for both is coming. The Wing Kiro and Rabbity are in the same spot. I highly doubt this is simply a coincidence. And you know, quite honestly, I'm gonna need to see a quirk awakening from Uraraka or something like that because there is no way she can hang with the gang like this. There's no way she's gonna be in a battle with all for one Toga with the power of twice and just pull up and be a equal combatant. There's just no way. I'm gonna need some planetary devastation or she just suspends all the twice clones in the air or something on some crazy nonsense. But let me know what you guys may be thinking in the comments in regards to how this fight or the whole war is going to go in general. Because it is not looking good for the heroes right about now. As always, I'm Celestial Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.